At uh, Electronica 2016, we've been welcomed at the uh, DigiKey booth by uh, Dave Doherty. Dave, um, DigiKey Electronics, Digi, Digital, and you are the key to electronics. That's how I view uh, your uh, your name. Okay, yes. you are the key. You are the key, some way, to to electronics as experienced by many, many people. Many people who still build projects are dependent on DigiKey and want to order stuff from, from DigiKey. Now, there are a, a couple of divides, as we call them at, the, at, at this time, uh, where people worry about what is happening, A or B. Um, let's mention one. Uh, through hole versus SMD. You know, the old style leaded components sure. with leads versus the, the small stuff. How does, how does the DigiKey product portfolio look like in that respect? Yeah, I would say, and I, I think you're probably going to have a topic later, but huh? this, to me this topic isn't binary, it's not digital, but it, it is more, you know, it's, it's more fluid. So clearly, if you think about some of the latest and greatest consumer products, starting with our smartphones, uh -huh. size is critical, profile is critical, and so there is a, there's a large accelerated movement to surface mount devices, but boy, through hole is far from dead. We have can't stop them. No, no, you can't, and, and they're a lot easier to design with early in the stage when you're prototyping, you're proof of concept, et cetera, so the number of radial devices that we have is, is still huge, passives, et cetera. However, when you tend to look in mass production, you'll see those replaced, and you, know, you can't beat how much density you can get on a board yep. through surface mount. Yep. Many of our uh, readers, if you like, typically prototype with let it component through whole components. They check if it works. You know, they produce the bomb, the beer, the bill of materials, and they send it off in an SMD version later for compactness. Yeah, you have it, and that's our commitment is to support those initial designs. And so we, I for the for the forever future, I see us supporting both through hold and surface mount. Good, very good news, and <laughs> very reassuring for many people to hear. I think, Dave, uh, another divide, if you can call it that, is digital versus analog parts. You know, the analog parts are sometimes considered inferior to digital and program. What is DigiKey's view on that? I'll tell you, I, I would disagree uh, vehemently that when, when you say inferior. Analog to me, now I came out of school and I studied more the digital, but that's because I wasn't smart enough to do the analog <laughs> products. It's an analog world we live in. So we have, it's our largest segment of, of, of product that we offer and, and our sales revenue and analog is greater than any other parts category. And again, it's you're going to have your microcontroller, we're going to process digitally, but we need to sense and interact with the environment in an analog way and that'll never change. Sound, pressure, sight, etc. And so believe me, that is alive and well. People are afraid that it's going to vanish at some point, but it, it is not. Uh, sensors, as you rightly say, remain analog in essence, and you have to understand how they work first. Huh? Uh, another divide, and then I'll, uh, I'll call it quits, uh, Dave, is, is, is um, discrete parts versus modulars. Wow. You, I, I noticed from your product portfolio that you have a lot of ready-made modules, drop-in modules, sure. um, kits and stuff. Uh, how does that compare to the uh, discrete parts? Okay. I would say the modules is our fastest growing segment. And that's because it just makes it so much quicker to get to market. When you have the functionality, you take some of the technologies, think about an accelerometer. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to do anything with as a discrete device. Mm -hmm. But when it's harnessed on a board and through some, a little bit of software protocol, you can make this thing work, you can get to market much quicker. So we see many of our uh, small, medium-sized customers, or even customers that are trying to innovate quickly, will start with a modular and integrated solution. Mm -hmm. And if time permits and they're trying to squeeze cost, maybe they'll go back and do a discrete design. Ah. And, and maybe not. Is that, can that be compared to a form of reverse engineering? They have the module, they want to do specific things with it, and then they go back to the component or the discrete level? I, I think, in, in, and I won't say in many cases, because I think the pace will continue to be such that uh, you will not be able to compete with the competitive advantages if the module will do what you want, it is already certified. So if you have any RF or wireless, you're looking for UL certification, et cetera, these modules uh, are, are ready, form, fit, and function to go for you. Yeah. Okay. Dave, um, DigiKey is recognized throughout Europe as an, as an coming from America, from the US. Um, how, in, in, in your view, did you adopt to coming to Europe? Tell me, we are very curious to hear from you how you experience the European customer in general, or more specific, Germans, Dutch people, French sure. people. Yeah. Sure. How does that compare, Dave? 
You know, I think what I would do is invite anyone from Europe, Asia, etc., to come to Thief River Falls, where we are located, and you will find that we are in such a remote location, even in North America, we are not close to any major markets. And so what we've established is a model where we have virtually a whole community all committed to serving engineers through the IT, the marketing, the, the logistics infrastructure. We service the U.S. market essentially remotely. Uh, we're 300 miles north of Minneapolis, just south of the Canadian border. Picture in Europe if our, country, if our company was located in northern Finland. I can mention some places to you which are not even that remote. Yeah, but that's why you, you learn in the web became this equalizer that allowed us to bring what we hope is a value proposition of breadth of inventory and same day ship service and we found uh, a receptive audience. Again, selection was key and, and there's so much innovation going on in Europe. It was a nice uh, function and... But there must be small difference, Dave, between the European clients and your US clients. Can, can you mention one? A couple of things that come to mind right away is language and currency. But those are fairly easy to, you know, to overcome. You know, I think we have to constantly look for technology. When you, when you think of telecom, the old standards of uh, telecom standards were different in Europe than, than the US. So when we go to our manufacturers and we say we would like to stock more products, initially they would focus on products aimed at the North American market. And we've had to tell them, no, we want to stock products that are aimed at the global market. Yep. Uh, these, this innovation may come out, it may be led out of Italy, or out of Germany, or out of Norway, and we want to still be a source of supply, a source of technical information for those markets. Yep. I think it proves, you know, that engineers are engineers, whether in the US or in Europe. They will talk technology, as you've been talking technology, in terms of parts and divides and interest, fields of interest. They are remain engineers, so in that respect, they are very much alike. I, you know, I couldn't agree with that statement more. That at their core, I, you know, I think engineers are inquisitive. Uh, today, we found them more than ever with the web. They're willing to self-serve. They just want mm -hmm. access to information, mm -hmm. access to sources, and that's what access to product, and that's what we try to provide. Okay. Dave, thanks very much for having us around. No, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. <laughs> okay, thanks.